What's up everyone, welcome back to another video with the Millennial Finance. A lot of you guys seem to have liked our last video on Stepan, so today I'll be going through exactly how you can start, so consider this a beginner's guide to Stepan. Let's get started. Cha-ching! So what will you need to start with Stepan? The first thing that you need, of course, is Solana because that's what you use to buy the shoe. If you don't have any Solana, then I recommend that you use Hobi. We'll leave our link down in the description below. You'll get 5% off your trading fees. In terms of how much, the floor price of Stepan seems to be around 13.5 Solana, but I recommend for you to get about 17 just to get a better shoe. Other than this, of course, you would need the Stepan app that is downloadable on both Android and iOS. And when you download that on your phone, you need to make sure that your phone is GPS enabled. And if you think your phone has any GPS issues, they might not be so ideal. This is because, like I said, Stepan tracks your steps and your speed based on your phone's GPS. So you want it to be as accurate as possible. Also to start, you would need an activation code from Stepan. I'll share later how you guys can get it. So the final thing that you would need, this one is optional, which is the Phantom Wallet. This holds all of your Solana and Solana related coins. It just makes things easier. You don't really need it because technically you can transfer from your exchange directly to your Stepan Wallet and vice versa. So how exactly can you start? First of all, download the Stepan app and input your activation code. If you don't have an activation code, you need to get one from Discord. Right now, it is a bit difficult because everyone is trying to get an activation code. And I think every day, the team releases around 1,000 of this at a certain time. So we'll leave the link to the Discord down below. You guys can use that to join it and look for the channels that share activation codes. Like I said, it's pretty hard to get one now. You have to be really quick whenever you see one to straight away put it into your app and just keep trying until it actually works. The reason that they're limiting the amount of people who can join every day is because they don't want too many shoes being minted or bought, so they just want to set some sort of control, I guess. So once you've gotten it, once you're in, what you have to do next is to set up a Solana wallet on the app itself. If you already have a Phantom wallet, you'll have the option to import this wallet onto the Stepin app, but I recommend just creating a completely different wallet on Stepin itself. If you guys don't know how these online wallets work, I highly recommend that you watch our video on it. You'll also get a seed phrase that you must remember because this is the only way to recover crypto from this wallet. So this wallet address that you create on the Stepin app will be the one that you send Solana to from your exchange so you can start buying shoes. Once you deposit, the Solana will appear in the wallet section, which you will then have to move to your spending account I'm not sure why they split this two, but yeah, you'll have to move it to your spending account to actually buy the shoe. So enough of this high level talk, let's get straight to what shoe to buy and how do you choose? All right, so this is the Stepan app. This is what you will see on the homepage, but when you just bought it, you'll see Solana right at the top if you have any deposited. I don't have any right now because I already forgotten my shoe. So they have a marketplace in app. You just have to tap the one on the right most and you'll see all the different kinds of shoes that you can buy. If you're familiar with Solana NFTs and you know Magic Eden, Stepan is also sold on Magic Eden, but I highly recommend that you buy it on the app instead of Magic Eden because there are way better options and it's usually cheaper. There are four different types of shoes. If you just click the filter here, you can see that there is a walker, jogger, runner, and trainer. This will determine the speed that you can walk at to earn GST. I generally recommend a jogger because you can walk between 4 to 10 km per hour, which isn't really jogging. You can just, you know, fast walk and you meet this requirement. If you don't like walking fast though, if you want to take your time, then go for a walker. You won't earn as much. And if you like jogging, if you like running every single day, then you can go for a runner. You will earn more GST. The reason I didn't do this is because I don't think I can run every single day. I prefer walking. The best option by far is of course the trainer. This allows you to walk at any speed and earns you the most amount of money. But of course, these then are then the most expensive option for shoes, which is why I also didn't go for it. So again, my recommendation here is to go for the jogger. All right, so in choosing a shoe, there are four different attributes that you have to look out for. Let me just show you guys my shoe. So you can see here, there's four different things, efficiency, luck, comfort, and resilience. Let me go through them one by one. The first up is efficiency. This basically determines how much GST you will earn from walking every single day. GST is the native token to the Stepan ecosystem and it is basically how you'll be earning money from walking. Every day you'll get a certain amount of GST based on the type of sneaker that you get and its attributes and how long you walk. 
And you can then trade this GST into USD or Solana or anything that you like and transfer it out whenever you want. Next up, we have Luck. This is basically the chance at a random drop. In my opinion, this is not very useful. I've heard that if you have a very low level shoe like mine, which is level nine, then you technically won't even get any random drops because the chances are just too low. So I just completely ignore luck for now. Maybe things will change in the future, but um, yeah, there's not something I look at. For comfort, apparently this is how much you will earn in terms of GMT when that starts to happen. Right now, this hasn't happened yet. So again, comfort is another thing that I'm ignoring for now alongside luck. The final attribute that a shoe has is resilience. So this is another one that's important. Basically, every single time that you walk, your shoe will kind of degrade, then you have to repair it. And the higher your resilience, the less GST you'll have to pay every time you repair your shoe. So to most people now, including myself from the research that I've done, the only two attributes that are very important right now is efficiency and resiliency. You can also upgrade your attributes when you level up. So you can see here, there's a button to level up. It will cost you a certain amount of GST and GMT that either you can grind or you can buy from a marketplace and you can level up your shoe. Every time you level up, you will get four additional attribute points that you can add to any of the ones that you want. Again, in my opinion, for now, you should only upgrade efficiency and resilience. So having said all of that, this is my recommendation for a starter shoe for many of you. Go to the marketplace, put on your filters, sneakers, go for a jogger, that's my recommendation. But again, up to you guys, whether you want a walker, or runner, go for it. I don't recommend a trainer. In terms of quality, just select common. And in terms of level, I think that the best way to start is by going for a level nine shoe. Once you've done this, just click confirm and you'll see all the different options that you have to buy on the marketplace. Each individual shoe will have their own attributes like I was talking about. And the optimal one is to go for an efficiency of 35 plus and a resilience of 10 plus. So you can see this shoe here is 31 and 10. Good, but not so good. So you can look at other options. This one looks terrible. Um, this one doesn't look so good as well. And yeah, if you see something like this, 32.9, 11.1, it is not the best. So you can continue looking if you want to, but it is not terrible either. Another option that you have, let's say if you don't want to spend 14.49 Solana, you can always go for a lower level shoe. So start at level five and you can just look for shoes that again have good efficiency and resiliency. If you go for a level five, then I recommend looking for efficiency and resiliency, both of them to add up to 10. So this one is 1.3 and 2.4. This totals to 3.7. It's a terrible shoe in my opinion. Look for a better one. Um, both of them summed up should be 10. And then from there, you can start leveling up your shoes slowly to level nine. And again, put everything into efficiency and resiliency. This is recommended for most people who don't really have the capital to buy a level nine shoe right off the bat. So that's completely fine. You can always do level five. I have a lot of friends who are doing the same. And then as they earn GST, instead of cashing out that money, they're just using it to upgrade their shoe every single day. So. Let's say you have bought your shoe already. It will appear on your homepage like this. This is my shoe. Once you got it, it's time to start earning money. So you can't walk for 24 hours a day and expect to make, you know, thousands of dollars every single day because that is just not how it works. Basically, if you look at this blue bar here where mine is one over two, this is your energy, which basically means how much you can walk to earn money with Stepin. Right now, you can see I have a limit of two energy. Um, this is the maximum I can go to. So if you have one shoe, you have a maximum of two energy. If you have three shoes, you have a maximum of four energy. And then there's a few more tiers that you can get to. But I'm going to assume that most of you guys will start with just one shoe. So two energy a day. With two energy a day, this will roughly translate to around 10 minutes of earning by walking every single day. Of course, if you're walking, you can go for however long you want, but you will only earn GST for the 10 minutes that you walk. Every single day um, at 3 p.m., 9 p.m., 3 a.m., and 9 a.m., you will get 25% of your energy refilled. This means that I will get 0.5 energy every six hours. This time is the same for every single person, so it's not a variable. Everybody will see the same thing. Usually, I would just wait for my energy to fill up to two before I start walking the full 10 minutes. Some people, you know, they do it every time it goes to 0 0.5, but to me, that is too much of a hassle. I don't want to have three minute walks four times a day. 
all you have to do is to make sure that you do your walks when your energy hits two before the next refresh so that you don't waste any energy. Again, the maximum that you can accumulate is two. If you have two energy and then the next refresh comes, it won't be 2.5, you'll just be wasting 0.5 energy. Let's say your energy has refilled to two already. All you have to do is press start. The first time that you do this, there will be a guide in app to explain you how to do this. You make a walk, after 10 minutes, just end it and you'll see how much GST you earned. Every time you walk, like I said, your shoe will kind of degrade and you have to repair it. So what you have to do is then just click here. You can see the 100 over 100. This means I've repaired my shoe. But after you walk, it'll be roughly around, let's say 95. You just have to scroll it all the way to 100, repair it and pay your GST. My recommendation is that you should repair every single time after a walk. Don't leave your shoe below 100 over 100 because this will impact how much GST you earn. After you've paid your GST cost, you would have made your net GST gain for the day. If you went for a recommendation, you would roughly get around 8 to 8.5 GST every single day. So what do you do with this then? Can you withdraw your money or is this all a scam? Well, this is a permissionless wallet in Web3, so of course you can. You can see at the top here. Once you earn GST, you can see it in your spending account. What you then want to do is transfer it to your wallet, put in your password here. So yeah, you see from spending wallet, to, from spending to wallet, select asset GST and just click all and transfer. I don't have any GST right now, so I can't show you guys how this works. But once that is done, you can go to your wallet. You have your GST here. You can see all the other tokens that they support as well. Um, if you want to hold GST, you can do that. If you don't want to, then you can convert it to either Solana or USDC. Most of the times I convert it to Solana. So what you have to want to do is then just click trade from GST to Solana, click max or whatever you want. You can see how much Solana you get and then click trade. You can either again, leave your Solana or USDC here, or if you want, you can transfer it out to an external wallet or back to your exchange. So to do that, just click transfer to external. Um, let's say it's Solana, put in your address. If you have a Phantom wallet, put in your Phantom wallet address there. If it's an exchange like Hobie, then put the address there as well. How much do you want to withdraw and just click confirm. Again, I have done this multiple times. Let me show you guys uh, my transaction history. So I can show you guys some of the Solana that I've already transferred to my Phantom wallet. I use this to buy more NFTs, but it's up to you guys. You can do whatever you want with it. You can withdraw it back to, you know, fiat currency, Malaysian ringgit, USD, up to you. You can see here I've sent 2.37 SOL, 1.06 SOL, 0 0.63, 0 0.85, and yeah. Basically, you can withdraw anytime that you like. Like I said, this is a permissionless wallet. Um, Stepan can't really stop you from transferring it out. I've tested all of this. You have no worries about it being a scam or them locking your funds in this app. Stepan is, in my opinion, a revolutionary way of switching from the P2E meta to sort of a walk to earn meta. This is a really good innovative product, in my opinion, because, you know, at the very least, I'm exercising and as a benefit, I'm also making money from it. With the current tokenomics, this is not something that I see will sustain for years. So don't get your hopes up. Don't quit your job after looking at the returns that you will get, but consider this sort of a side income for you. I hope you guys found this video helpful and I hope that you can follow the steps to start your journey with Stepan if you're interested. If you guys have any questions, let us know down in the comments below. We'll be always happy to help. Thanks for watching till the end. Give us a huge thumbs up and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. See you guys in the next one. Peace out.